Um, good afternoon, everybody. Um, Abdul Chohan, uh, my um, setting is in Bolton. I'm from ESA Academy. Feels a bit strange walking around this. Can this thing not turn around by itself? <laughs> so that would be really cool. Um, I've been a teacher for approximately 10, 12 years. Um, chemistry is my um, subject. However, um, I'm part of a journey at ESA Academy, which has actually been in existence for literally just, um, just over one and a half years now. Um, it came into existence January 2009. Um, and it's been a bit of a journey, and that's really what I'm actually going to take you through. Um, I was pretty much stuck in this school. Um, predecessor school, building falling apart, um, not real investment made into the actual fabric of the building. But then again, at the same time, not much investment made actually into the, the, the learning and the intellectual capital um, of, 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 of the, um, the environment as well. Um, we almost got shut down. Okay, the academy nearly got, well, not the academy, the predecessor school almost got closed down. Um, it was pretty much failing at many different levels, att attendance, attainment, and all the usual stuff that schools get measured with. Um, the place is quite special to me because my mum and dad went to this school as well. Um, and I actually live just around the corner, so I'm quite aware of the, of the community that actually um, lives there. Um, some local sponsors got involved, and January 2009, it became ESA Academy, and um, there was a new leadership that was um, actually appointed. Um, very quickly, we decided um, that there was really only going to be one thing that was going to happen at ESA Academy, and that is this thing. That every student that comes here will succeed. And when we mean succeed, we didn't just mean, you know, in a tokenistic sense, that, you know, that they've, they've gained something and then they're leaving. But when, we meant, when, we, when the word succeed actually means at all levels. So in terms of their ability, in terms of the investment that we'd put in and what they would get when they were actually leaving the academy as well. Um, so in terms of their attainment and the GCSEs and the real hard stuff that schools get measured with, there was that in success in those terms as well. But at the same time, success in that these students that come out, we're actually going to prepare them for the future, for jobs that don't exist at this moment in time, for terminology that hasn't even been created and so on. Okay, so there was this idea that we're actually creating students for success. What we wanted to be able to do is move away from this idea that we're actually a school to this idea that this is where learning happens, okay, and students are actually learners, okay. Ignore all the text, but the key thing there is we didn't want to be an institution where students come and something is done to them, okay. We wanted to actually do things with the students. And that actually meant moving away from the usual, um, the usual approach in terms of where you know, students are actually um, categorized you know, according to their date of manufacture you know, <laughs> and put into year groups and so on. So that, that was a key thing that we actually wanted to move away from. Stop the batch process that happens in schools. Um, we wanted to be somewhere where we're responsive where if I'm a teacher that stood at the front of that classroom, if there is a front of the classroom, okay, I can meet the needs of all those students that are there in front of me, all 15, 20, 30 of those students. I'm able to meet the needs of all of those students. Exciting times, because part of the um, new academy was that we were actually going to get this building. Um, and in October 2011, um, this building should actually be ready. The... Students that we actually serve uh, come from quite, quite um, deprived backgrounds. Um, socially, some of them um, uh, would not be considered as going to university and so on. Um, so this was quite a big thing within the community, the fact that there was actually going to be a new build and there was investment and so on that was actually going to go in. Very quickly, my role as in director of ICT or looking at technology and so on went something like this. The conversation with the principal. Principal said to me, what is actually going to work? Let's be real, okay? You go into classroom and you speak to teachers about technology. Yeah, it's okay if it works, okay? So I wanted something that was actually going to work. 
I wanted something that doesn't take 20 minutes to actually log on for the whole class. I wanted something um, that is accessible, okay, both in the academy, outside the academy, something that is so personalized that the students can actually use at any time, any place. And at this time, um, I myself was actually just in fantasy world, you know, where students all had one-to-one -one devices and they could all access everything seamlessly and so on. Um, very quickly, I came across the iPod Touch, and at that moment in time, that was the device that actually did what I wanted it to do. Okay, it was as simple as that. It wasn't a phone, okay. Um, it was quite seamless in the integration of our wireless and all the other stuff that we wanted to do. So I started off on this particular project where we decided that we're actually going to give an iPod for each student at the academy, okay. Uproar. Okay, people are saying it's a gimmick, it's not going to work, and they're going to sell it on eBay, um, all sorts of stuff. And interestingly enough, um, a school on the other side of town that has students that come from quite privileged backgrounds, it's okay for those students to have iPods, okay, and have iPads and all the rest of it. But these students, our academy, would actually sell them on eBay, okay? So that was, a, that was an interesting conversation that actually happened. Um, very quickly, we began to see lots of different things happening around the academy. And this is the first thing that I actually noticed. This notion of creativity. Secondary school teachers in the UK are really good at breeding creativity out of children. Okay? You know, you go into a primary school or you go into an early year setting in a nursery and it's fantastic and, you know, there's all sorts of things going on. Um, you come into a, a primary school and it's that, a secondary school, sorry, and it's that usual scenario where you go into the classroom and you're facing the front and you go into the airplane mode, you know, switch off all electronic devices, put your seatbelt on, face the front, you know, and I'll tell you what's going on and you just listen sort of thing. Um, so... One of the first things that I began to notice was this idea of creativity. I saw students that were actually doing things that were so creative, okay, that I was actually beginning to learn from them, okay? And one of the first things that happened was we were seeing actual staff being, beginning to pick up ideas um, and beginning to see this creativity happening amongst um, students. You know, there's a, there's a story that, that came to mind at this point, which I'd heard, and it was about, about a little girl that's in a classroom, and she's, she's drawing a picture, and she gets, she gets asked by the teacher, what are, you, what are you doing? And she says, I'm drawing, I'm drawing a picture. What are you drawing a picture of? And um, the little girl turns around and says, I'm drawing a picture of God. So the, the teacher turns around and says, but nobody knows what God looks like. So the little girl says, they will do when I've finished. <laughs> you know? And... It's that idea with students, you know, that they're prepared to have a go. It doesn't matter if it's wrong, they continue to have a go. And it's us as adults and educators sometimes that put this thing in their minds that, look, if it's, you can't get it wrong, okay, it's got to be right first time, okay. So this was one of the key things that happened. I'll give you two, two anecdotes very quickly. First one was of a, of a girl, she was from Poland. There's about 36 languages that are spoken at ESA Academy, by the way. We have a massive intake of international new arrivals. Um, students come from lots of different parts of the world, and that's why personalization was very important for us. There was one girl, Anna, uh, she came from Poland, fantastic student, intelligent, um, really good at sciences, um, and what we used to do was quite typical. Um, she'd come into a science lesson. Um, her English wasn't brilliant. Um, so we'd do the typical thing, take her out of science, okay, teach her English, and put her back in the science lesson, expecting her to pass um, the subject, by which time she's actually missed out the content. Um, Anna, when she had her iPod Touch, she actually asked, please don't take me out of the lesson. I'm fine, okay? When I spoke to Anna, what she was actually doing was she was pulling Wikipedia in Polish, okay? Um, always on device, switch it on. She sat, sat in the room, teacher's talking, okay? She's got Wikipedia in Polish. She puts in, types in the electric motor. It comes up with all the principles and everything in Polish. She's actually understood the principle, the scientific principle of the electric motor, Okay. She's at a meta level, she's actually learned some of the language as well that's coming from the teacher. Okay. When Anna leaves that room, she's improved her English, 
and she's improved her understanding of science. She came out with grade Bs and above in science, okay, fantastically well, okay. And we've not got the time, however, there's absolutely loads and loads of, of anecdotes and stories that I can give you around the academy. And for the first time ever, the creativity and the use of technology wasn't going from me, the geek, the teacher that's into IT, forcing it down, students and teachers. It was actually coming the other way. Okay? It was students that were actually telling me, I'm getting stopped in the playground. Sir, can you have a look at this? Look what I can do. Yeah, and there's a student that doesn't speak any English, he speaks Arabic, he's converted his iPod into Arabic mode and you know, he could switch the languages and he's Googling in Arabic, pulling up images, saving them and using them as flashcards in the classroom. You know, what time's lunch? You know, because he's got pictures of food, he's got a picture of a toilet on there, can I go to the toilet please? You know, and every week his, his flashcards would change because he's picking up the language as the teacher actually goes through that with him. Huge other developments. Okay, especially in light of the new build. Lots of learning. At the same time, product, and these, these were things in terms of creativity that I never expected. S teachers could actually take registers on the iPods, which meant, you know, that they couldn't, didn't, didn't necessarily have to be in a particular place. It was wireless. They could suddenly be anywhere on the academy site and actually take a, take a register. Okay. Um, they could look up information, they could find out about the student, they could find out about their learning needs, they could pull up everything that in the past we'd spent thousands of pounds on a computer just to put an information system on it so that we could actually access it. Suddenly it's in their hands and it's in their pocket. Podcasts, learning suddenly became fantastic. Okay? Students could go onto a website, okay? this is GCSE pod, it's an example of. Um, students could actually go onto a website Click on an exam paper, and it brings up all the podcasts they need to pass that exam. Okay? 900 downloads over the exam period. More boys downloaded this, these podcasts than girls did. Okay? Massive impact. Communication. We enabled email. didn't cost us anything because we already had an exchange server running. We just created the accounts, put them on here. Old systems where we would have actually people stood there um, and students taken out of lessons just so that they'd be there as a runner. They can go and call other students and take one piece of paper to the other uh, classroom and so on. Suddenly, communication became fantastic. Okay, you could actually send an invitation to a student for a meeting, notify the relevant teachers and even parents by email just in that one communication. Okay. Teachers began to send notes and information out um, very, very quickly to, to staff and students um, seamlessly. Okay, Edmodo, okay, fantastic utility, free, in your pocket. Students are talking about the learning that experience in the classroom, and it's actually informing the lesson objective for the next lesson. They are telling the teacher what they want to learn in the next lesson. Okay, it's free, voting system built into it, fantastic too. Again, came from teachers. Caretakers and other admin staff. Suddenly, you begin to see creativity. You know, caretakers would you know, do a job in one place. They'd run to, the, run to their computer, which was on the other side of the site, and um, to pick up another job, only to find out they were actually in the next room. You know? um, but you know, that community spirit and everybody actually being um, involved with this. These were the costs. Seven pence a day over five years. Doable. Even with a refresh rate built in, 18 pence per day. Okay. And at the same time, there, was, there were huge impacts. First and foremost, um, in terms of savings, we used to buy planners, 6,250 pounds a year. Students hate planners. They never use them. And we replenish them and we force them. Okay, suddenly students are actually using the calendar and putting all their details in. Printing, I can't even begin to get started on this, but the amount of printing without even doing anything and just changing systems began to reduce straight away. And these are not even up-to-date figures. In the new academy, we, we will not be having as many printers as we have. We actually pay £40,000 a year in just leasing the printers that we have. Okay, huge savings. Biggest impact. We were a school before that, 2007, um, 2006, 2005, 2004, our grades five, uh, five plus, A star to C, 
were actually 26% for three years running. Okay. 2009, we became the academy. We put some things in place. We got results of 67%. September 2009, we rolled out the iPod Touches. Okay, resourcing went digital. Students could access information. Students in a class, they want to ask a question or they want to know what a word means. They'll put their hand up once, the confident ones, but how many of those students will put their hand up again? Because in the next sentence, there was a word that I didn't understand. And a third time, not likely. Students were now actually looking up words, simple things, getting, gaining an understanding. 2010, our results, grades A star to C, were 99%. And that was unexpected. This was so unexpected that the local press didn't actually print the results because they thought it was an error. Okay. Our principal punished him by actually inviting him to the um, award ceremony and actually making him the key sp keynote speaker. Um, so that, that was actually quite interesting. But hey, you know, huge impact in the way in which students learn. And for those people that, you know, sometimes they were BTECs and other things that might have been in place and so on, actually... You know, 52% with maths and English. We'd never been past 30%. Never. Okay? So, massive impact on the way in which, um, you know, we actually saw the way in which these devices were actually being used. And I think that sort of creativity continues um, as we speak. So, thank you very much. Thank you, Abdul. You can tell by the applause what people thought of that. In the spirit of trivial pursuits, I only have one pie to fill here in terms of questions. <laughs> so I'm going to try and get a question from this last group over here. Or are they going to prove stubborn? Have oh, we got one? Sorry, I can't. Yay, hey, right at the back. Can we get the mic? Uh, second, third row at the back here. Thank you for a wonderful presentation. But I want to put a hypothesis to you and get your reaction. I think that it would be really easy for me to give those iPod touches to some other head of ICT in some other school at another time and not achieve anything like the success that you've achieved. I don't believe it's the iPod touches. I believe it's something else that the iPod touches catalyzed. Could you, in one sentence, say what that is? I certainly agree with you in that. I wouldn't say that if you just gave an iPod Touch in any school to all students, this would just happen. Um, there was a, a collective um, and a variety of different things that happened. We, we, we focused on pedagogy. We focused on um, personalization in the way in which students were actually um, were learning. And one of the things that we allowed to happen was that students were able to take exams when they were ready and not when it's tra been traditionally dictated that in year 11 you go for exams. So we had students in year 8 that were doing maths GCSE exams with year 11 students. But I do believe that that was the, uh, the catalyst for that was the technology that allowed to glue that together. I can definitely say to you that we would not have been able to achieve the results that we have done had the technology not have been in place. Thank you.